welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons, the weekly podcast that revisits, <laughs> reviews, and ridicules some of the world's weirdest animated series. I'll be your host, Dave Trumbor. Joining me today, as always, the DC area improv artist and comedian, Sean Paul Ellis. How's it going, bud? David, David, David. I'm great. How about yourself? Not too bad. And the freshly moved up, <clears throat> up the West Coast, I think, uh, Matt Barron. How you doing, buddy? Good. How you doing? Not bad. Did you move? Did you, <laughs> good. How you doing? Did you move north, <laughs> south? I'm not. I'm terrible with uh, Bay Area geography. With coordinates. With coordinates uh, and maps and the Google. So technically, well, I mean, also literally east. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just moved to the other side of the Bay Bridge. So. So you just take a little ferry boat and cross there. Uh, no, Just we had a car. Yeah, exactly. That's, car, that's what I said. did. Well, I'll tell you what, a car would have come in handy for the show we're going to talk about today. Uh, uh yeah. <laughs> so I could have run it over. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we know how Matt feels about this one. We're going to be talking about, since it was uh, 4th of July weekend this past weekend, hopefully you're all recovering from that, we're going to be talking about Liberty's Kids. Uh, it was a early 2000s educational show that was set in colonial times and centered on uh, three kids of varying backgrounds that kind of took other students as they're watching it through the American Revolution uh, over a period of about 20 years. Kids never age in the 15, 20 the years. is so creepy. Yeah, kids never age. They, they, they stay the same. Ben Franklin, however, he ages, uh, probably due to his uh, rampant venereal disease, which they don't really <laughs> touch on in this show, surprisingly, because it's meant for, like, eight-year-olds. But uh, Yeah, really, in terms of uh, historical accuracy, right. they really kind of, like, they, they put... They put aside a lot of the misogynistic oh, they love tendencies ben Franklin. of Ben Franklin. Love him in this. Uh, oh God. Well, I mean, he's so. Here's the thing: is that these these kids are essentially under his ward. Yes. And yeah. So, so this is basically the synopsis here. Yeah. Um, they are kind of like asked to record history, like from their eyes as childrens, uh, you know, through the as they mentioned through the part of the the Revolutionary War, and so like from the Boston Tea Party to right. the, like the Revolutionary War, and I here's I just I want to get this out. I <laughs> hate I hate history. Like Ooh, this show. This was torture for you. Made, that I'm this sure. This show made me realize that I I just I hate history, um, and I'm glad that it is history because <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to move on with my life, guys, and this history is just making me continue to look back all the time. Well, hold that uh, thought, because for the next hour, we're going to be talking about it again. So after you're done with that, <laughs> yeah, put it sure. behind you. Oh, are we going to be hating on something that we all didn't really super enjoy? Yeah, I'm cool with that. Buddy, you, you can hate away. I was actually not pleasantly surprised by this, but I guess neutrally surprised. So yeah, I don't even sure. know if that was really good. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Is uh, that actually a thing? I get I mean, it is <laughs> exactly, now. Exactly, yeah. I was neutrally not moved. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, I posted the theme song up a couple days ago, which I thought, now the theme song was my kind of like first foray into this thing, because we were all in college by the time the show was on, so definitely not the audience it was it was aimed at, but um, just from the we theme song. We should have mentioned that the original yep. the original run uh, went from 2000 to 2003, Correct. like late 2000 until early 2003. Yeah, this was another one that they cranked out like 40 episodes of it, and then just syndicated right. it out. One season, to, yeah. one season, 40 episodes. Yeah, which, I, I mean, it kind of makes sense, because it's not like a, a they're not oh, going to serialize it. Oh, because history's finite. Throughout. It's very finite. <laughs> 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 they got to the Revolutionary War, like, oh fuck, we're done, done with this. Show. Everything's gonna be smooth sailing from here. Yeah. Like, guys, let's just push it forward and see if we can get all the way to WW one. I mean, pretty much nothing happened between the ratification of the U.S. Constitution and like mm, Civil War. Eh, that's seventy years. Probably nothing happened there, right? So we'll just yeah, skip right probably, on that. Probably, probably not a damn thing. And uh, also, no. those kids wouldn't have aged in that thirty years anyway. So what does it matter? No, they were all Highlanders. Is kind of weird. <laughs> Just a bunch of McLeods. <laughs> They're all from the Ugh. Connor McLeod clan. God. Yeah. Well, there I'm it sorry. Is. I, cut, I cut you off, Dave. No, it's cool. I don't even remember what my train of thought was going to be, but we've already covered the series <laughs> synopsis and pretty much the history of it. So what the hell? Let's let's get well, into it. You know, it was, uh, well, just a quick history thing. It was by... Uh, Deke. It was by Deke. And I here's the thing, is that Deke has made so many yeah. wonderful Suck cartoons Deke. and shows uh, like throughout the years. Yeah. I just I want to I want to just put a shout out to Deke like they just do old school they Deke. have Retro yeah they've Deke. done like vintage a lot of Deke. like yeah. yeah vintage Deke did like a lot of great uh, stuff and so I was actually I when I saw that originally I was just like oh my god it was the thing that every time at the very end of a show they'd come up and I just laughed myself yep. uh, like a pubescent. Yeah, Freaking they always cut that, that in there, so it would come up for, I mean, I'm sure people remember, it was like the shiny, it was a, it was a, it was a big D, go ahead and you can laugh again, uh, yeah, lowercase i and a big C, 
And before little kids could just shout out Dick, they were just like Deke. And they're like, Deke. Oh, oh, Deke. Obviously, it. it's, it's definitely Deke. Say I felt it. like it was, here's the thing. I felt like it was an inside joke that Deke and I shared together. Yes. And we were always and laughing thousands of other kids around around yes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. It's all right, buddy. They kept us all right. So you, the first thing that you got into oh, was right, right. theme song. Yeah, so I had no idea what this was. Uh, we had the idea that since it was a holiday, we were going to do like a holiday theme show. And we were just like, Mistakes. shit, like, well, yeah, we're, we'll do it again, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> for Fourth of July, I don't know. This we'll is be just the first thing that came next week. Yeah, we'll forget. I mean, we have <laughs> short-term memory problems, so. Uh, yeah, so holidays, looked up Fourth of July stuff. There were like some specials. We were looking at, like, uh, Schoolhouse Rock, which is probably, like, the equivalent for us as kids and even an older generation as kids uh, as to what this show was. But, yeah, the theme song was my first introduction. Now, that theme song, you can check it out on our site. It's not great. Not great. Not even great as far as, like, the theme songs that we like to make fun of. It's only, like, a minute and a half long, but uh, 45 seconds through it, it just breaks down into this quote-unquote freedom rap, which was pretty pretty <laughs> awful. Oh, and Sean, who who wrote and possibly performed this again? David, I'm so glad that you asked me. Yeah. It was Aaron Carter. Oh, yeah. And if you're wondering to yourself, Aaron Carter, who was he a part of? Uh, he is the brother what was of his... Nick. His what was his function to, in colonial his America? To, his yeah. What was his fame? claim to mediocrity? Uh, his claim to fame was basically he was like in the late uh, 1990s, he was a like a teenage pop sensation. You might know him from his brother, Nick Carter, yes. who was in Backstreet Boys. So there you go. Ugh. And now you know the rest of the story. So that's it. Just a weird little like side thing. Um, so again, like we said... This historical series uh, set in the in the 1770s up through the 1780s, and Ben Franklin was like this jolly, jovial, revolutionary, but pretty much like a grandfatherly, or just like a, like a friendly uncle kind of character. And he had this print shop. Uh, that's where all these kids worked, and they were basically like junior reporters. Now, let's let's like talk all about all uncles do. Every uncle. Yeah, owns every a uncle print does. Shop. Every uncle owns a print shop. Uh, they're not creepy at all, and they want you to get involved with the revolution. <laughs> And report on it from the front lines sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Child soldiers. Good stuff, punk. <laughs> this is like Coney 2012. What, really... what was oh. the battle like? It was horrifying. It was terrible. <laughs> Not at this show. You know what a bayonet is? Ooh. I saw one shoved through a man's face. Yeah, these kids should be haggard. Uh, let alone the fact <laughs> that they don't age. They should be. They should be in like psychological counseling at this point. They should be so upset. They like really I just, be. I feel like. I feel like sitting down as like a counselor for any of these kids, you'd be like, so tell me, how was your day? And the kids would just be like, oh, seen some real shit. And as they're like, like cigarette. Smoking, <laughs> smoking a cigarette. Yeah. They're doing a line of coke off of like, you know, a couch or an ottoman. Like in a... I don't think Col- they let the, you do that in therapy. Oh, you really? do it, you, in, the, in the colonial time, anything went. You do colonial coke all day long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so coke classic. Coke right. classic, yeah. It wasn't... Uh, <laughs> That wasn't a. It wasn't part of the Stamp Act, so they didn't have to pay extra tariffs on that at the time. Oh boy! Just the tea, which is what we'll get to in a little bit, because the first episode revolves around the Boston Tea Party. Um, kind of odd that the actual Tea Party was probably less violent than it was on this show, but whatever. We'll get into the historical accuracies and inaccuracies as we go along. But let's get into the characters. Um, the the historical characters, everybody, especially like America, uh, kids that came up in the American education system, will know and love. Uh, for the most part. Ben Franklin we start with. Now, uh, since Ben Franklin's role in this is is sort of a a revolutionary, yes, but also sort of a journalist, uh, I thought it was really interesting that they got Mr. Walter Cronkite to do the voice of him. And that is just the tip of the iceberg in this, too. This is is what blew my mind, uh, was that, Dave, when you sent out the email that had, like, all of the the characters and stuff like that, like, it blew my mind how many noteworthy, like, A-list celebrities voiced characters yeah. on this show. None of the wow. main that, characters, except for Walter Cronkite. Yeah, the rest not, of them were just that main blew characters. me away, too. Yeah. Now, I think because but, it I mean, has, like, an, an educational really cool. slant to it, I think it was probably a little easier for them to get to do that. Um, and a tax write-off. Exactly. So you guys <laughs> want to talk about a few of them? Do you have that list up in front of you? Oh, God, yeah. Let's talk yeah, about it. Uh, Paul Revere was voiced by Sylvester Stallone. Which is an obvious choice. Sure. Because Paul Yo, what like, if oh, I went oh, to a fight? Uh, Bruce, come, Bruce, come. Like, if that happened, everybody would be like, <laughs> that was uh, does Paul Revere have, like, is he having a stroke? Did he get hit by, like, a stray bullet? Is he un- right? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Unintelligible? Pretty much, if, if, if Paul Revere had been Sylvester Stallone, 
the British would have invaded us hands down because everybody had been like, what the fuck is that mush mouth saying? <laughs> like, I can't understand a fucking word out of his mouth. Pretty amazing, though. Pretty amazing. Uh, uh, equally uh, amazing, I think. When you think Thomas Jefferson, you think, <laughs> you know, a progressive thinker, uh, a somewhat controversial character, an eloquent, maybe not speaker, but writer. So obviously when you put all those things together, the first person that comes to mind to voice him is Ben Stiller. Of course, of course. 100%. Yeah. You think Zoolander uh, <laughs> when you think Thomas Jefferson. Just Jefferson flashing that blue steel. So that was an interesting yeah, he, one. he was a stylish mm, man. Mm, mm. That Jefferson. He loved the ladies. Fancy. Loved the ladies. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, John Adams yep. uh, was voiced by Billy Crystal. And that one's just kind of weird. It's like, all right, Yeah, I guess. that was. That was weird. I mean, it was before, as well before uh, Paul Giamatti's turn as John Adams on the fantastic HBO miniseries, John Adams. Yes. Which is, that's what I watched uh, all 4th of July as I was working. Um, they had the whole miniseries on there. It was fantastic. That's where I learned wow. most of my history. I don't know if it's accurate or not, but whatever. <laughs> HBO. HBO. Yep, HBO. Nailed it. Just like Game of Thrones. That's where I learned my European history. So. Yeah. At what point in time were dragons? When did they exist? In the, uh, yeah, the pre-times. Yeah, nailed it. Yeah, the, pre-times. There you go. You should study During Batman. the Targaryen dynasty. <laughs> the Targaryen dynasty. Sean, you hate history. <laughs> what do you care? Yeah, Sean, I hate it. history. Did, no, I know I it. I just right. don't enjoy it. It's just not something that like I'm a, I'm a big... I don't nerd out on What did you say, so Matt? I, I said, Dave, you can read, right? <laughs> you know, it's something I've struggled with for a long time. As a writer, um, yeah, I hate to... <laughs> you don't know what you're writing? No, I don't. I just hope for the best. I cross my fingers. And people keep paying me, so, I mean, it works. We just usually get a lot of emails from Dave throughout the week that just say, like, poop, copy-paste, like, 20 times. The guys just, That's yeah, really they just hide it from me. Uh, it's, not something we, it's not something we like to advertise, but, you know, this is why we moved to a podcast uh, and audio medium. Much better. Oh my God! My outlines Benedict are Arnold. Nice. Benedict Arnold is voiced by Dustin. That's Powell. another one. Just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But... Uh, did, and just did... Rain Man Benedict Arnold. <laughs> now I will say this for the for the next three on our list here. They at least more or less match up the ethnicity, I guess, of it. Yes. Yeah. So that was kind of interesting. Uh, so you've got Baron von Steuben, who uh, you're gonna have to refresh my historical memory. Was he? part of the hessians or was he the like the german soldier that came over and was actually helping washington i can't remember what oh man i thought he was the german soldier that came over to help. i thought he was too but i didn't know if he came from like the hessian uh the hessian faction or not but anyway he's let's let's just say that he's of the germanic tribes so what famous pseudo german technically austrian would you have voice Dave, i'm glad that you asked yeah, continue. Because it is me. It is me only. Oh, is that who? I wasn't sure who it was. Oh, yeah. Join us on the podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Well, we couldn't have him and Stallone on at the same time because it would just be a mess. So, Ugh. thankfully, uh, yeah. thankfully they came at separate times and recorded that lovely intro for you all. Uh, John Paul Jones. John Paul Jones. Baron, you want to take this one? Can you do your best? Yeah. <laughs> John, Paul, John Jones. Paul Jones was Liam Neeson. Yeah. Uh, and I, I mean... I just can't do a Liam Neeson. Nobody can. I mean, I really, could call you. I could, I could call you up and tell you I have a specific a set particular of skills, set of skills. But... Yeah, yeah. This is well before that too. Now the last one. I don't know if you guys know who this is. Do you know who? Um, I don't, I first don't. of all, I don't know who Bernardo de Galvez is. I think he was like a Spanish emperor maybe at the time or Spanish king. I'm terrible with history. Mm. Uh, Don Francisco. <laughs> Don Francisco voiced him. Now, Don Francisco. I only know because of Una Vision and Sabado Gigante. That's the only yeah. reason I know him. And I think that's what everybody knows him from. But uh, pretty much. Yeah, it's, it's pretty yeah. random. Pretty cool. Uh, so that is our voice cast uh, of these guys. And these are just like, these are just ones that just like pop up on random episodes. Now, Whoopi Goldberg right. also did one. I'm trying to remember her name here. Uh, Deborah Sampson. And she yeah. was basically like a mm-hmm. colonial woman who dressed as a man and joined the, the Continental Army. So she actually fought in the army. Not the only one to do it, but but fairly well known. I didn't... It was like the plot of Ladybugs if you remove the soccer component and put in Revolutionary bullets. War. And bullets. And bullets. Yes. And bullets. <laughs> and bullets. That's exactly what it was like. Yeah. Rodney Dangerfield was around there. And had Rodney Dangerfield. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield would have made a killer Ben Franklin. Oh actually. my God, this is amazing! <laughs> would have been a great oh, Ben Franklin. I would have loved this show. Oh. If Rodney Dangerfield was in it. It would have been more historically accurate too. Oh, yeah. God. All right. Yeah, so, so that was we, we talk we talk about all of these uh, additional like celebrity voice. Yeah, who show up for one episode? Actors, maybe. Right. Who show yeah show up for one episode? Uh, but like we're missing like the main cast of uh, like the the three children. Oh, I don't know and the then... title 
characters, the Liberties kids. Yeah, the kids. Liberties kids. Kids Ugh. of Liberty. Sons of Liberty would have been a better... How pretentious are you to yeah. call yourself Liberties kids? Well, especially because the kids that they have, like, the kids that they have involved. So they have, I don't even want to call them token, but they're very representative of different, um, different backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, national backgrounds that are forming this new country called America. So you've got... Sure. Yeah, so you've got... Two orphans and a bitch. <laughs> and a former slave. <laughs> oh, fuck. So, yeah, that's pretty rough. That's pretty oh, rough. Geez. But true. I mean, yeah. that's kind of true. She was not, um, she was not yeah, on like, the nobody, side of the revolutionaries, let's put it that way. Nobody really has, like, a, like a happy intro story. Oh, they this, seem happy about it when they're telling it, though. Makes, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that's the, that's the weird contrast, yep. is that, like, when they're talking about, they're just... Like, so, there is a French character... Um, Do it. Who, Give me your was, best French. Uh, was, I was going to take Henri. this one, but go ahead. No. Yeah, Henri. Oh, that's uh, it? You're not going to do the rest of his name? Henri no, Richard gonna, Maurice du It's uh, Henri uh, Richard Maurice uh, de Lut, uh Le Fabri yeah, Fabrice. Le Fabrice. Um, he was of the, Fabrice. of the Fabrice family. Of <laughs> the Fabrice yeah, family. Um, he is on his way to America. His parents basically sign up to be like indentured servants to, in order to come over to the new world. Yeah, which I didn't think process- like the French really had to do that. Yeah, but apparently I didn't remember that either. French like, sort of peasant peasantry could do that. I don't know. That's that was weird. Here's the thing: I also really didn't pay a ton yeah. of attention to history. I should I should qualify all of this with saying that like not only do I not enjoy it, but I don't know a ton about it. So well, let's just keep I, this in the framework really, of a PBS I mean, no, cartoon really, for like yeah, eight year olds. Exactly. So. You don't have to stretch so too HBO far. is really the only place. Yeah, much, I'm much better, much classier. In my history. Yes. So uh, he's like uh, on the en route um, nice. to the Americas. Uh, <laughs> his parents unfortunately die on the ship. Of what? And they didn't just die. Like the, just the plague. Yeah, the they died of the plague. plague. <laughs> the fucking plague. So like he's got plague parents. Yep. And so he's a plague baby. Yep. Uh, plague baby. And so what happens is the like the the guy the captain of the ship decides that he's going to make him like a uh, his bitch yep. for the rest of the, the you know the the trip and just like abuses him um during that time and so sad story again so yeah but he seemed kind of okay when he was talking about it uh, he was kind of like uh, here's the thing out of all the characters i wanted him <laughs> i wanted to like him the most yeah like did anybody else have like a character that they were just like i really want to like this character and i really wanted to like uh, and the and he just like every time he opened his mouth, I was just like, "You are just he's the little pro- like you were just a fucking scam." He's the little energetic, like, kind of gets in trouble, kind of irritating. Yeah, no. Do you I really think like Moses was the best character? Definitely, definitely. You think Moses was Moses was easily out of this four out of this ragtag four of just ridiculous sad stories like he was the best well baron you want to give us moses's background and it's interesting to know that we don't you know we don't see like an origin episode for each of these characters really the closest one is right. probably sarah they're already kind of like together as a group more or less in that first episode um yeah. so we get them like at random times like they'll be stopped in the middle of the street during a um a curfew when the british are basically patrolling the streets and they'll just stop and have an origin story in the middle Jesus. of the street after curfew, so it's random stuff like that. That's just like, oh, it's let me ridiculous. let me tell you some exposition. So, yeah, do you, uh, do you want to tell us <laughs> Moses's backstory because it's pretty awful? Yeah, so I think uh, he was captured from West Africa. I think when he said he was like eight yeah. or something like that, but definitely really young. Um, and then he came to America uh, against his will, <laughs> and as you do, uh, as you do. Yeah. But um, he learned smithing as a slave, and then um, he was loaned out on like other jobs, made some silver on the side, and bought his freedom eventually. Uh, then came to Boston, uh, somehow ended up working for Ben Franklin. I forgot because I spaced out. Well, I, I mean, just, here's, the thing, like, here's the thing that I want to He did too when like, he told that story. He's like, well, uh, yada, yada, uh, yada, I ended up here. Yeah. Yeah, like – how do you buy your freedom in the South and then move to, like, probably one of the most racist cities currently in the North? Well, was he up in Boston or was he down in Philly? I think he was in Philly. He was in Philly. Yeah, for the oh, was he in yeah, Philly? Yeah, yeah, Because that's where Franklin yeah. was and that's where the Continental Congress was. And Redacted. Where... Redacted. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, I just, when he's like, I, and then I bought my freedom, I was like, I don't think it worked that way. Well, he was also <laughs> like, he would like, he was like, I would do some blacksmithing work and occasionally they would give me a silver coin. I'm like, motherfucker, you got whoa, like, whoa. you got like, yeah, silver coin. That's pretty, that's pretty that's good. A lot, that's a lot of money. That's some that's sort of pence. That's some good smithing. I don't know what that is, yeah. but. He's like, yeah, and eventually, the dude should be like a hundred years old by this point in order to like buy his freedom. 
or he just worked nonstop. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but it worked for the show. And the best part was like he's telling this story of like, wait, Mer Baron, did you talk about how he was like him and his brother were captured and he was like separated from his brother and his uh, his brother is basically, as far as he knows, either dead or still enslaved. No. Uh, yeah, I think I missed. Did that you leave part. that little bright little nugget of the story? out there because uh, he's like telling How these the kids <laughs> well he's telling the kids this as he's like trying to fix their like wagon or whatever and he's just got a smile on his face and he's just doing his work he's like oh yeah me and my brother were captured from our homeland in africa and we were sold into slavery and then eventually my brother sold off and he might be dead and then i bought my bought my way free and came boop, up here boop, 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 boop. well time to go to bed kids yeah oh. it's, ugh, it's pretty messed up now the rest of the, the kids i mean sarah has probably the best uh, it's kind of hoity-toity origin story. So let's talk about James before we even get to her. Because right. I don't know when... Baron, you watched a few more of the earlier <clears> episodes. I don't know when they get to his origin. I just read it uh, offline. Uh, let me see. I think they didn't... That was also, like, not a flashback one. Right. But I think it was in the third episode. Um, so this yeah, kid's kind like of... The, yeah, I think it was in the third episode. That kid's kind of... Not really a jerk, but he's he's basically like your... I don't know. I'm trying to like compare him to Henri, who's like this little energetic spitfire. No, no. Okay, so James is like the guy who gets super obsessed about one thing and then just doesn't shut the fuck yeah, up yeah. about fair. that one thing. Like everything he does, he's just like, I'm going to be a journalist. Don't, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody can read. At this point, yeah. How about you teach people to read yeah. first, buddy? Start you with that walk, orphan. You crawl before you walk, jerk. Like... You're a little orphan jerk. Yeah, he's another orphan. <laughs> another orphan. Because they love populating <laughs> the show with the orphans. Story, it's dude. really bad. And as <laughs> I was reading it, I was just like, oh, and that's how he becomes friends with Ben Franklin. I saw it coming. <laughs> Well before I actually read it. Do you want to bet that like Ben Franklin was the one that like yep. commanded the lightning bolt Guaranteed. to hit James's like family's house, <laughs> it's like, killing his parents? It's basically like, well, him. I don't have any kids of my own. Maybe another historical fact that people should probably check because I have no idea. He could have Ugh. hundreds of kids. Um, he's like, so what I need to do is get an orphan to be my journalist in training. What just gonna better fly way this to do this? With a key over top of this I'm kid's just going to tie it to this kid's house and see what happens. <laughs> so basically, he's orphaned when a lightning storm breaks out and burns the kid's house down with his parents inside, killing everyone except James. <laughs> now, my favorite tag is that uh, James Hiller, after this tragedy has, has befallen his family, James Hiller is the kid's name. He now admires Ben Franklin because he invented the lightning rod. Invented the lightning rod. Just let that sink in. Don't know oh, if we did it God. before or after, but <laughs> either way, whatever. It's like, man, oh, sure do miss kid, my parents and that house kid, we used to have. Kid, good old Ben Franklin and his lightning rod. Now we've got oh. the last person of this group. So at this point, even in the first episode, so James and Henri, there's a few years difference uh, in their ages. James is kind of like a, a mid-teenager and Henri is kind of like a maybe around 10 years old or so. Um, so there's a little bit of a difference. Moses is older. Moses is maybe in his 20s, 30s, and he's kind of like, he works around the, the print shop, but he also um, kind of watches out for the kids. Oh, no, no. Just go ahead and say it. Moses is the only useful one that actually does anything. Yeah, pretty much. And he kind of, he keeps the, the kids kind of like in check, too. Like, Moses, Moses is the best. Yeah. I just want to go on record hashtag saying that, like, hashtag the best. Yeah. Hashtag blessed. I mean, like, he... <laughs> He is just, he is wonderful. Like, he's the only person who I feel like in this show out of, like, this ragtag group has, like, any common sense and is, like, making any progress regarding, like, what they're doing. Because uh, these other three are just there to throw, like, a monkey wrench into, like, any plans that they have. Yeah, all their real time. job is to just, like, sit back and observe and occasionally do some interviews. Yeah, uh, their job is really to just that. shut the fuck up. Yeah, just write and it let down. History happen. Well, but now they have to. It. Their real job is that they have to teach these kids like what's going on. They gotta teach. The, they gotta reach these kids. So oh, that's kind of what they do. Now let's let's talk kids. about before we get into the actual plot of the first episode, Boston Tea Party. Let's finish up with uh, Sarah Phillips. Now Sarah Phillips is the one uh, member of this main cast that is not yet joined up with a group in this first episode. She's on a ship crossing the Atlantic from England. Um, supposed to be going to Boston, I right. believe. The, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Supposed to be going to Philadelphia. Sorry. Possibly the best ship I've ever seen. She was the only one on it. <laughs> yes. Except like one, one, one captain <laughs> up, up, up above the deck. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah. 
and it was a huge ship. Oh, it was enormous. She gets in one little storm, and she gets an ink blot on her nose. Right to her face. And that like, was a little weird right to her face. for me. That was strange. I was like, why? whose decision? She takes, like, an ink money shot yeah, within, like, the first, the first, like, like 40 second seconds. of meeting her. <laughs> That's pretty weird. It's like, whoa, what's up, Sarah? So How in the doing? in the meantime, she's writing a letter back to her mom, who's like this noble woman, you know, Lady Phillips, whoever the hell that is, who happens to be meeting with Franklin at the time. So these two are meeting together. Now, in my show notes, I made a little notation that Franklin was probably trying to bang Lady Phillips because that was kind of what he was <laughs> known for. This yeah. show, for whatever reason... Thank God you wrote that. Though. Well, Get yeah. Get that. Get it. And then shared it with everyone. Yeah. So uh, for whatever reason, the show decided not to share that with the kids. So... Just read between the lines here. You, you yeah. can infer. It's teaching kids to infer. Here's the other thing: Shoot. is that if I ever, if I ever meet somebody who like leaves like my general area, and then they they write to me, and they're just like, "I will write you every day." That's the day I stop being friends with that person. Yeah, I mean, unless you're like twelve. Because yeah, you know, I'm gonna not be friends with a twelve year old. That's, well, that's case. probably like, good. That's, that's probably a good. Thing, probably a good just thing. in general yeah that's how i'm gonna like that's my new friend test is if whether or not you're willing to write me a letter every day if you even attempt it we're no longer friends <laughs> this is why we all only talk during this one hour podcast <laughs> this is, this is, it. is the only time we talk <laughs> any more than this we're no longer friends nope done, done. so that those are the characters so now you kind of have an idea and again you can go back to the site and check uh, or you can just google it but <clears> what the hell you might as well go to our site and do it because we already did the work for you um, mm. You can check out and see kind of what these characters look like. It's very kind of like, it's cartoonish. Um, I don't really know how to describe it or what even really to compare it to. Um, it's like '90s Disney. It had yeah, that kind of like, kind of like a 90s Beauty Disney. and the Beast angular hair. Yeah, Aladdin kind of even kind on. of a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably a good description. So that's kind the of the like rounded going. square eye. Yeah. The old rounded square eye. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what ethnicity that is, but we'll take it. Apparently it's <laughs> colonial American. Oh boy. So anyway, as I mentioned, so little Miss Sarah Phillips, little hoity-toity loyalist English uh, quote-unquote bitch, as Baron called her, Sarah Phillips, is destined uh, for Philadelphia. Now, she's supposed to go to Philadelphia to meet up with Franklin and the crew, but because of a storm, that ship is rerouted to Boston. You guys remember the name of that ship that she happened to be so- on? The Dartmouth. The Dartmouth. The Dartmouth. Yes, which plays an interesting role in the history because that was one of three British ships that were caught up in the port and were part of the Boston Tea Party. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So, yeah. So we're introduced to her. We're introduced to these other kids, and what? And that basically, uh, her being rerouted to Boston. uh, That's when Franklin, or I think Moses. Does Moses get a letter from Franklin? Somebody gets a letter and says, like, oh, by the yeah, way, this chick yeah, you're looking yeah, for is up in nice Boston story. now. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So they just travel up to Boston. Now, here's here's one of the things that kept recurring in the episodes that I watched. The, the length of time that it takes anyone to get places in this show doesn't seem representative of what was actually going on in, like, colonial times. Like, no, nah, I mean, this is, like, some nah. video game fast travel. Oh, yeah. Back and or even just, like, dishes. common, like, common contemporary day highway travel. Because, like, they go, they have to go to, uh, from Philadelphia to New York at one point and back within the space of a day. Well, even if you're, like, pushing the horse and getting a new one every few miles, it's probably still going to take you, like, 15, 20 hours just to do that. So these guys just hop up to Boston, they're good to go. So when they get up there, kind of what, what transpires once they get up to Boston? They they're start walking through the mean streets of Boston. Boston Tea Party, son. Yeah, right to it? <laughs> We're going right to it? Yeah. yeah. All right, fair enough. I mean, here's the thing. is that if You don't even like, want to talk about Sam Adams hanging out in the bar uh, and be, yeah. being all rowdy and fat? Like, <laughs> he was he was great. Rowdy and fat. He was rowdy I mean, and fat. He's like, you all yeah, know me. He's like this portly dude. He's like, everybody's just like sloppy drunk. He's like, you know me. I'm Sam Adams. He's like, here you go, kids. Now you should know who this is. That was Sam Adams calling him. I mean, it's just, yeah, it was, sorry. We I just got text from him. Sam Adams. Um, and just, I feel like I, I liked that they threw Sam Adams in there. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. It was kind of funny, uh, to see him like riling up a group of people, like in a bar, like in Boston. Cause like, that's exactly what you would expect Sam Adams to be doing currently. Um, like today, yeah, even. Current, like, yeah. it, like now, <laughs> um, like citing the, the sugar act, the tea act, immediate. the stamp yeah, exactly. act. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So many acts. Um, I just like, but it was like, it was kind of hard. Cause like he was kind of in and out and it was just like, ugh, like it felt like it was a missed opportunity that they could have explored a little bit more about 
Sam Adams and his character. Well, look, what they did there, they brought him in, and they're like, oh, it's a recognizable name that you kids probably heard in a history lecture at some point when you weren't sleeping. Uh, so they're just like, it's Sam Adams. And he goes Who through this, Who hasn't heard like, of Sam Adams, though? All these drunk kids. Ugh. Like, uh, if they had brought out, like, Jim <laughs> Cook, and he was just like, hey, exactly. guys. Like, hey, I'm from Sam Adams. Like, oh, it's the Patriot. Like, oh, that's that guy. Paul Tuckett, Paul Tuckett, Pat. Um, but yeah, so they basically just bring him in to like hit these these talking points that they probably have to like check off for whatever educational requirement the show. Well, has. I mean, he's coming in to stir the pot. Yeah, it's exactly what he's doing. So he's getting all these drunk uh, Bostonians riled up, reminding him all of the different uh, taxations that came from from Britain. And then he's like, oh, and by the way, the Boston Massacre happened. And then they're just like, uh, like flipping tables, and they're like, let's dress as Indians and dump all the tea. <laughs> it's like, where does this? How did we jump right to that? Have you been so, talking about this? So I mean, like, here's this? the thing: is that like the kids are like the kids are like there, and they're like walking in the street, and yep. then suddenly they see like this rowdy group of bar folk just and, pouring out down the yeah, back just alley. Out. Yeah, and, and like one of I, one of the kids is just like, oh my god, like there's a whole bunch of Native Americans, a bunch, and the bunch other of Mohawks. Just, like, yeah, yeah. You know, a bunch of like you know a bunch of like uh, war bonnets and like headdresses and stuff like that, and like they're all like running in the direction of the docks. And, you know, these kids are like, oh, my gosh, all these Native Americans. And then one of them is just like, really? Like a blonde Native American? I think it was American? Moses that like, was basically just like, oh, the blonde, blue-eyed Native American again, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Any common sense. Well, here, so I got like, to uh, say this. Two of my favorite moments of this episode. <laughs> the one when they're in the bar and they're getting all rowdy. And they, like, form this, this like, plan to do the Boston Tea Party thing. And the one guy, like, dumps his uh, ash from his pipe onto the bar and dips his finger in and just drags his fingers across his cheek like yeah. he's making the tear marks or, like, the I war don't... makeup. And he um... looks right in the camera. It's so <laughs> fucking intense. Uh, he, he looked like he was somebody, like, prepping for, like, a Monday night football yeah, game. Yeah, he was ready to just go like, on the gridiron, And just, man. like... And just breaking the fourth wall. That was the just, original. Like, staring you, that was so. That was the original Redskins. Uh, oh, you ready for some football? Yeah, it was before they moved to Washington. Terrible. My other favorite uh, part of this whole endeavor is like, yes, I understand that Moses bought his freedom and he travels with papers that, in case anybody stops him, he's like, no, 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 I'm free. I'm not a slave. Everything's cool. Maybe not the best choice to have him as like your sole guardian of these kids just walking around because he's probably going to yeah. attract some attention which kind of happens yeah. later on too but yeah so now everybody everybody goes on this ship and they start uh dumping all this tea it happens to be the ship that sarah's on so that's how we kind of have this meet cute if you want to call it uh yeah everybody kind of getting to know each other the funny thing was the show actually portrayed this uh act as a little more violent a little more rowdy than it actually was i guess Historically, it was actually like a fairly calm um, protest. Even the sailors at one point, they were like, well, we're not going to stop you, and we'll even help you, because what the hell do we care? Um, yeah. So that was kind of interesting, that it was like, this show walks a weird line between giving kids just enough historical fact to just be like, okay, remember this name and this title of this thing, and that's all you need to know. You don't really need to know like, mean, the nuances of it. Yeah. But I mean, like you think about it, like what's the one thing the kids in history like kids learning about history what's the one thing that they crave electrolytes i was gonna say blood oh blood like, yeah kids love historical blood <laughs> kids love historical blood kids love lightning sure strikes and blood testina's <laughs> pizza hot rolls <laughs> oh shit that's not our sponsor by the way but i wish they were <laughs> you have sponsors <laughs> i wish we did <laughs> hey get so, a sponsor yeah. this mess so, it ends up getting it ends up getting rowdy on the ship, and as a turn of event, oh man, jeez, you can't wait for this because it's not like it's the most predictable thing. But like James bumps into Sarah Phillips, yeah, and he's yeah, just like, he's like, what? Do you, he's like, what do you feel about this? I'm a journalist yeah. again. He, like, he's in the middle of this like riot. Shut up! Just shut up! <laughs> like this riot like, is going on in the ship above him. People are screaming and like shooting. And he's like, oh, hey, by the way, I'm a journalist. And he just, like, whips out his little pad of paper and he's like, how do you feel about this? And then he just argues in her face when she's just like, I think it's disgraceful because she's this prissy, like, English girl. So, yeah. And that sets and up so, their, and, yeah, their sort of contentious and relationship. And, and, like, and I love I love that, like, he's just like, he's like, oh, just so I can get the quote, what's your name? Oh, yeah. And she's like, it's like Sarah Phillips. He's like, he's like oh. oh, he spells it out. And he gets 99% of the way through her name God, so <laughs> just to eat up time, I think, on this show. Because <laughs> we're ten minutes into that show, and it's called the Boston Tea Party, right? Uh, the Boston Tea Party's done. It's done. Yeah, so now they're done. like, well, what the hell so, do we do now? Uh, yeah. Here's what you do. You escape through the streets of Boston, basically kidnapping Sarah as you go along, because she doesn't want to go with them. 
and you end up at the house of Phyllis Wheatley, because yep. that's what you do. So I had to look yeah. her up because I'm terrible again. But apparently, the no, first hey. African American woman published. Uh, yes. I don't know ever or just in the United States or colonial America or what, but uh, yeah, they just show up at her house and then they're all like flabbergasted to find that she's actually kind of a slave to the Wheatleys. Um, right. This is where they stop. Now, granted, it's after curfew. They've already been stopped by a guard in the streets. The British are patrolling the streets looking for anybody that's out after dark. Now they're all standing there uh, with a black man and a bunch of uh, unrelated kids and a slave. And they're standing there after curfew, and Mose, or, um, Phyllis just decides to tell her story right then and there. Yeah, Not like, hey, just, come on around hey. back, I'll make you some tea, and then we'll chat. <clears throat> just, yeah, let me just tell you my life story right here and now. Uh, and I mean, and like, it's in. it's challenging. I mean, like, you have to realize that, like, this is, this is like, maybe 15 minutes, and this is, like, like, anywhere between, like, the 10 and 15 minute mark. And so far, like, there have been, like, two backstories that are related to slavery, and, like, that is never an easy thing to like just dive into. Well, and they pick the weirdest time and <sighs> place to do it too, because if you want to talk slavery, I don't know, maybe leave it for the Civil War, because even the founding yeah. fathers were like, look, eh, we don't necessarily agree with it, especially people like Jefferson, who tried to work it into a lot of the documents. Uh, they're basically right. like, look, this is a problem, but we've got bigger fish to fry right now. We've got to become an independent nation first, and then we can deal with that later. They were right. like, eh, let's table it for 80 years, and then we'll, we'll deal with it. <laughs> um, uh, thanks, Obama. But, uh, okay. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know where that came from. But it's just weird how they try to, like, shoehorn that stuff in. It's like, if you're doing Boston Tea Party, maybe don't focus on, like, slave rights for, for the half of this episode. So I don't know. It was just a little strange. Maybe. I mean, they could have talked more about like the T Act, the, the Stamp Act. Yeah, any of the like, taxes, they, they, the occupation yeah, like, I mean, by the soldiers, they, any of that stuff. Right. I mean, they explain very, like they explain very like clearly in like one line of dialogue. Thanks, Sam Adams. Just, like, yeah. yeah. They're just like, you know, we're being taxed uh, as a colony and we have no representation in British politics. Doesn't, doesn't James End actually say it? I think he says it. He's yeah, like, no he taxation said, he almost verbatim without representation. No taxation without, it's like, like, what does that mean? You, yeah. You know, like, hey, buddy, just move to D.C. We still have that. Yeah, you have it on your license plate, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I well, I thought you um, So, I mean, like, you know, <laughs> it's just, they, they go through this whole big, long thing and so, whatever, it's, it's all done. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, that's kind of like end of story. Yeah, they get, that's like this is like that's like it. That's like the, first episode. The funny they, thing they was, try to they try they need to get a they need to get a letter out. And they need to get a printing press. Yes, and then they just commit a breaking and entering. No, well that too. And meanwhile, like Franklin is back in England, where unbeknownst to me or apparently history, he's being tried as like a traitor in like the House of like Lords or something in Parliament. Yeah, which I don't yeah, think I don't, remember that. I don't think that ever happened. I think so. <laughs> the only historical fact I think there, the Boston Tea Party did happen when he was over in London. They found out about it, and he basically, he kind of denounced it because he had to publicly there, even yeah. though he was kind of like, kind of supported what they did back home. But over there, he, he it was a very savvy political mind, so he kind of like downplayed it and was just like, okay, I should probably get the fuck out of here and get back, um, where they will hang yeah, me the makes... next time. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, don't think they ever brought him up as a traitor, but whatever, it's just, it's just educating the kids. It's just whatever you need to tell them is fine. <laughs> yeah. So that's the end of Boston Tea Party. Now, did you guys watch any other episodes that you want to chat about? Uh, I watched the next. I watched the next episode. I think you guys both it. did. So do you want to? Yeah, I watched the next two. What was that about, um, Matt? What was the next one about? So right after the Boston Tea Party, um, it kind of went right into uh, the, you know, they were like harping on the taxes thing for a bit, and um, they went right into like the next taxes. Um, like the intolerable act, right. um, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, I mean, it was interesting in the like sort of educational cartoon way that they kind of took one historical item and then built a largely bullshit story around it. But at the same time, like, you know, just a lot of the, you know, items like the, you know, Stamp Act, the intolerable acts, like, you know, the Sugar Act, I mean, they kind of build it into like almost like one episode each. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm I'm almost glad I didn't watch this because <laughs> I don't know if I could have <laughs> I I sat through them. Yeah, I was like, well, I guess I should just keep going. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so. I'll, I'll give them credit because it's like this stuff isn't exactly dry. Like John Adams is a, is a great miniseries to sit through and, and watch it, and you learn a lot of stuff. I, again, I don't know how historically accurate it all is, but it's very entertaining and it it, it feeds it to you in a way that. 
you're just listening and watching a story. This stuff was very much like, okay, kids, now it's time to pay attention because here comes a historical factoid. Uh, it's 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 tough, you know, to balance that. Um, I watched what the first Fourth of July, which was basically when they were trying to get the Declaration of Independence together, and they had to, you know, get all the the delegation or the delegates from the thirteen colonies to like come together and ratify and agree on things, and that was a, a big bone of contention. I think they did that one okay. That one was fine. Um, so yeah, again, I. I don't know. Do you guys have any more you want to talk about in specific episodes before we kind of I rack mean, up, wrap up, and see like if we I, recommend? I was just curious. Like, at what episode did they bring in uh, Benjamin uh, Martin? Ben Martin. Yeah, it was uh, Mel Gibson played him in the movie The Patriot. Oh yeah, I don't know. He's all just bloody <laughs> on the battlefield <laughs> with like just holding an American flag. Yeah, what what part did that? Wait, was that not historically like, historically accurate? No, hundred percent. Oh, 100%. Well, that how character died, was actually. based off a historical figure. No, was it really? Was it really? Yeah. Was it Sylvester oh. Stallone's <laughs> Paul <Revere? laughs> That might be the fact of the episode. I love that so much. Oh my I love that. Oh, my God. Uh, Dave. Classic. Dave, how do you feel about this show? Would you, would you seriously recommend it? Dude. I mean, look, if I were like a third or fourth grade teacher and I wanted... You just had a deep sigh. That's a no. I did. But like I said, if I'm a third or fourth grade teacher and I'm really hungover after the 4th of July weekend, then yeah, I'm going to play like a straight week uh, of select episodes just to get myself back together. I'm so glad you're not a teacher. No, it's probably a really good thing because who would be teaching in the 4th of July in the middle of fucking summer? I just realized. (laughs) Uh, Let's see one of them crazy year-round schools. That's Um, un-American. I don't know. Like I said, for us in the, sh- the shows that we kind of talk about that are just like entertaining and fun and just goofy tunes, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't look at it for that. But if you're actually looking for something for like younger kids to give them something educational, that's not just the sugary crap that's on uh, on TV. Then yeah, it's probably you could do worse. You could do worse. Yeah. Ringing okay. endorsement, you can do worse. Baron, how did how did you feel? You know, I mean, it, it was uh, it was good and bad. I mean, <laughs> on one hand, like the. You know, I kind of like the animation style, and you know, I I'm like on the fence with historical cartoons because you know, on one hand, it's you know a good show, but on the other hand, it's terribly done. So, <laughs> you know, I'm giving this a solid five. Out of what? Out of like out of what? Thirty. <laughs> Just five. Just five. <laughs> you do the math. You did math. <laughs> so we, I don't oh, know. Man. Well, Sean, what did, did you give your non-recommendation? Yet? It's, you obviously hate the show, but you know what? I would say watch the first episode. Yeah, check it out. I would Boston say, TV. I would say, I'd say watch the first episode just because, like, look, if you're as much of a fan as I am about seeing uh, the East India Tea Company get their comeuppance, <laughs> then yes, you have to watch the first episode for the show. Captain Jack Sparrow um, doesn't show up though, <laughs> as far as I know. Um, I, I just, I, you know, I think it's, again, not to reiterate a point, but I mean, I, I just think historical cartoons are, are very challenging and educational cartoons are very challenging. And True. so they took two challenging, like, subjects and put them to, or two challenging, like, genres and mashed them together. And I mean, I think for the purpose that it served, I think that it was good. I just, I think that, like, if, if you have sat through a history class and yeah. you have graduated high school (laughs) and you're watching this you're just gonna sit there and just be like what what is this (laughs) like what what the hell is going on it's i don't think i've ever described any show like this before but it's functional it's functional yeah it really serves really like entertaining yeah it serves a specific purpose and it (laughs) manages to almost achieve that purpose uh well but yeah so the show's about history this show is history and we'll never have Bam. to talk about that one again. So, Thank you. you guys, that's our first holiday special. What the hell? I don't even... Arbor Day? I don't know what the next one's going to be. No idea. Are there any Arbor Day shows? Oh, please. Captain Planet? <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Oh, God. That's more yeah. of an Earth Day, I guess. We can, we can work some Arbor Day. Yeah. Shut up, Dave. We're getting up for Arbor Shut Day. Up. Shut up. So we'll have another holiday special coming at you. Uh, in the meantime, do you guys have anything that you want to plug in the coming weeks? Yep. What you got? What's uh, coming up? Hey. Uh, I'm going to be performing uh, some improv in the District of Columbia. How about that? Are you who's dropping bowling pins? That would be Rachel. Oh, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel's uh, our producer. Uh, in Casey. Our producer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, July 12th uh, at the Source Theater. 
in Washington, D.C., near U Street. I'm going to be performing uh, improv at 10 p.m. You with a group called Knox, that's N-O-X. Uh, you can look us up and find tickets online at WashingtonImprovTheater.com. Excellent. We'll have all that information up on our website as usual. Matt, I know you just moved. You're probably looking forward to a good long rest. Anything coming up for you in the coming weeks? Uh, lots of Ikea furniture assembly. Ooh, Boom. That's rough. That's exciting. That is not a vacation. I love that. Do you? It, Maybe you can go over to his place and do it for him. I really then. do. I really do. It'll be an international yeah. it, experience for you. It is international. Oh. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's strangely therapeutic in a way that, you know, the hate just drowns everything else. I think her. It's a very focused hate. I put a bed together backwards once and then had to take it apart. What, like upside back. down? <laughs> yeah, who knows? I don't know. How do people sleep? I don't sleep. <laughs> Sean, Sean sleeps <laughs> strapped to his mattress and hanging from the ceiling, apparently. I have a sleepwalking disorder. Relax. Ah, well, there you go. That, that explains it. Um, okay. Yeah, so not much for me. Uh, I will say if you're interested in any of the San Diego Comic Con stuff that's coming up at the end of this month, you might want to head over to Collider.com. That's where I write for the site, doing uh, movie news, TV news, entertainment, stuff like that. And we will have a ton of people out at Comic-Con, and we'll be doing a lot of coverage over there. So if you can't quite make it yourself, or if you are going and want to meet up with some of the guys, just follow along at Collider.com. As far as this show, you can find us uh, on our website at SaturdayMorningCartoons.com. That's morning with a U. You can find us on Twitter at MorningTunes.com. Sean's been doing a great job over at our Tumblr page. I don't know how much stuff is going to be for Liberty Kids on Tumblr, but I'm sure we'll find something. I mean, I put a bunch up there. Oh, did you already? Okay. Right, I, I put I put a couple things up there. It just it wasn't uh, yeah, entertaining, I, I, <laughs> creative. I, just, I, I only put one post. It was it was a little bit challenging to find. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. So, so you can find that over at SaturdayMorningCartoons.tumblr.com. You can also email us at SaturdayMorningCartoons at gmail.com if you are so inclined. You can give me reading lessons. I would greatly appreciate that. Where can we find you guys on the Twitters and the Instagrams, all that good stuff? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at, at Sean Paul Ellis. And Matt? I'm at MattSF07. Excellent. And that'll be, that'll be it for us today. You can find us again next week where we're going to be talking about one of my favorite cartoons. I'm really looking forward to this one. Oh, man. And guess what? It's my pick, so I get to say what we're doing this time. I know. I it's going to be cops yes fighting crime in a future, in time. future time man i'm looking forward to that one it's gonna be good till next time <laughs> thanks for listening it's been saturday morning cartoons <laughs>